Hi, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a quick lesson in the symbols of propositional logic. Now, this lesson is part of a more ser general series of lessons on propositional logic. So if you're interested in those, check out the links in the description below. So just to get started, propositional logic, is, or as I'm going to represent it here as PL, is a formal language for studying logic. Uh, PL is known as the language of propositional logic, and it's comprised of uh, three items. First, it consists of a set of symbols. These are its alphabet or basic characters. Second, it cons consists of a syntax. This is like its grammar. These are formulate which ways it's appropriate to put those characters or symbols together. And third, there's a semantics. These are the rules for assigning truth values to the syntactically correct units or grammatically correct sentences or formulas, if you will. So today I want to talk a little bit really quickly about the basic symbols of propositional logic. So PL will consist of the following symbols. First, it'll consist of an infinite number of propositional letters. These will be uppercase, Roman, unbolded letters with or without subscripts. It's up to you. There will be five truth functional operators, and you can see those five here. One looks like a V, one's a right arrow, the other one is this left right arrow. There's another sign which looks like a tilde, but uh, it's kind of a little bit different. And then there is what might be looked at as an upside down V or a caret. And then finally, there are a left and right parenthesis for um, indicating the scope or the range of these uh, truth functional operators. But I'll talk about what exactly the notion of scope is in a later video. So just to kind of mention a couple features of the symbols of propositional logic. We, since we want a vocabulary or an alphabet that with, uh, that can express a wide variety of different situations, we don't want to be limited just to a single character. And so we'll make use of positive, positive integers subscripted to any uppercase Roman letters just to ensure that we won't run out of characters for the language of propositional logic. There are 26 Roman letters, but not all of these are necessary given that we are going to subscript integers to the letters. Uh, we could just make use of a single one, for example, P, and just add whatever number of numbers that we need if we needed more characters. And, um, and this is just an aside, we don't actually even need all of this, uh, these uppercase Roman letters. We could represent everything using binary notation with ones and zeros, but that's a discussion for a different day. The five truth functional operators have a specific name, so it would be helpful to learn this and if you want to refer back to what these are. The little sign for negation is sometimes referred to as not or just the character for negation. The what looks like a caret or upside down V is the wedge or the sign for and. The V is just simply called V or sometimes it's the operator for or. The right arrow is simply called the right arrow, and the left right arrow is often called the double arrow or the operator for if and only if or if.